Hi, I'm Chris. Thanks for spending some time with me today. So growing up, I wasn't a big fan of meatloaf. Um, neither was my husband, Kevin. Both of us, our childhood meatloafs were not all that great. I think both of us came from families where you try to stretch your bucks. So meatloaf really was, it wasn't much as about the meat in it as much as the loaf that was in it. So um, several years ago, I guess I started making, I, found a, re a recipe for turkey ranch meatloaf, which started my kind of fun in let's try a meatloaf again. And it was based on uh, some seasoning packets and things like that, but this is a number of years ago and I've kind of changed it as time goes on. And it started our kind of foray into meatloaf. So now I make probably a dozen different types and I don't even think I can make the same one twice because if you've ever paid attention, I don't know how to measure that well. <laughs> It kind of dumps in a pot, what do I have, and then we go for it. So this is my turkey ranch meatloaf. It's incredibly easy to make. So you don't have many ingredients for the turkey ranch meatloaf. Um, I've got a couple, pa I'm actually making a double batch. So there's um, ground turkey, and I have the uh, one that's 99% fat free and then one that's regular. I find that you, if I mix the two, it works out better. It needs a little bit of fat in it. Then we're gonna add a uh, ranch dressing mix. Uh, if I make my own up. Their uh, ranch dressing mix is not that hard to make, and if you put it in the refrigerator, it'll last a while. So that's always a nice, helpful thing to have around. Um, I'm gonna take, if you were using a packet, um, it would be one packet of ranch dressing for every pound of turkey that you're using. So in this particular case, three, three tablespoons of this equal one ranch dressing. Um, since, it, like I said, I'm making it double so everything is kind of level. Um, two eggs that I'll beat up. Two or three tablespoons of ketchup. Um, then fried onions. Um, <laughs> this is kind of what makes this recipe kind of unique is the fact that it used fried onions in the inside. Um, uh, normally you'd use a half a can, uh, but since I'm making a double, it'll be two. And then um, stuffing mix, dried stuffing mix. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I happen to prefer this one. This is the Pepperidge Farm Herb Seasoned. I've used others as well, and I've used unseasoned. Uh, but for some reason, this is my favorite in this particular recipe, and it's about three-fourths of a cup per serving of this. So I'll do a cup and a half, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cup and a half of this to the mix, the whole can of this. So that's what it is. And I have to warn you is that this video might have a lot going on when you're watching it because it's kind of one of my cooking days. So this morning I roasted a chicken, or I roasted two chickens, and now... Now, I've already shredded those up, but I'm in the process of making chicken stock. So that's simmering away. Then I'm also, it's a bread baking day, so I'm also rising bread. So there might be a lot of things you see going on in the kitchen. It's not just about the meatloaf tonight.
look how beautiful this meatloaf turned out. I, I, I know it looks like there's a lot here, but it's all going to suck back in. Um, it's crunchy on the top. So one of the things I like to do is to make sure that it, um, after I make it, that it sits in the refrigerator for a while because all the flavors blend in better. And then once you bake it, see, look at all the, look at that. My husband's favorite parts are the crunchy parts. So this will end up turning into um, meatloaf sandwiches later in the week, leftovers, but yeah, this turned out absolutely fabulous.